This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. In Japan, thousands of people go missing every year due to unexplainable circumstances. These poor citizens are the victims of curses. In order to combat these cursed spirits and keep the nation safe for innocent civilians everywhere, there lies a secret organization of humans that are capable of using cursed energy. These people are called Jujutsu Sorcerers, and for thousands of years, they have reigned the earth. In the modern era, Jujutsu society Society hides in secret behind Jujutsu Technical School and the three great families. The school acts as a farce to train gifted children in the art of sorcery in hopes they grow into strong professional sorcerers that can take more difficult missions. I've already ranked every Jujutsu High student in the series, so I thought it would be fun to move up in level and talk about the faculty of the school and some of the more professional sorcerers in the series. Like before, these characters will be ranked on overall strength, their cursed technique and how versatile they are in a battle with the other contestants on this list. Without wasting too much time, make sure to hit the like button and if this sounds like good content to you, hit that subscribe as well. Thank you for watching. Give me a second of your time today, guys. One of the coolest things about Toji's heavenly restriction is the fact it makes him completely invisible, right? It's super cool for Toji to be able to keep himself safe online by masking his IP address and encrypting his online data to help secure his private info while on a public network. And if you want to keep your identity safe online and also be the invisible man, you need Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all that info between your device and the internet, keeping your personal data safe from criminals and big companies. Surfshark also blocks out ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts with its clean web feature allowing you to stay hidden just like Toji and sneak in and do your business without even leaving a trace online. Surfshark also swaps the location of your IP address with a new one, meaning you can travel all over the globe with 3200 plus servers in over 100 countries. All Toji glaze aside, I've even personally used Surfshark to watch my weird foreign documentaries that are only available in Europe. I wanted to watch the new Roger Stone documentary, absolutely insane by the way, and despite it being about a United States political figure, it is not available in the US. Go figure. It's in Melbourne International Film Fest right now, which it's making its rounds and only available through that streaming service, which is only available in Australia. So. Yeah, I asked Diavolo and he said the New Zealand zip code doesn't count. But with Surfshark, I just changed my IP address and boom, I'm locked in, baby. Use code NOOPERATOR for an extra three months of Surfshark VPN right now using the link in the description. And just like me and Toji, you can be invisible. Surfshark's got a free 30 day back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose. And you can use your one account on multiple devices. And to be fair, is there really any more of a reputable VPN service? You know how easy it is to shill for a product that I already use? Go download Surfshark VPN right now. And again, use my code in the description, no operator for three months extra added onto your subscription. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And we're back. Uiui is a child sorcerer and the younger brother of Mei Mei, kleptomaniac and much higher ranked sorcerer. Although being just a kid, Uiui is not only very mature for his age, but also quite skilled in sorcery, capable of things like simple domain or maximizing his cursed energy output to bring more attention to himself. Before being old enough to even enroll himself in Jujutsu High, Uiui seems quite for lack of a better word, obsessed with his older sister Mei Mei, willing to do anything for her, even die for her if she asks. And his skill as a sorcerer is proven by Mei Mei's willingness to even include him in her missions. His curse technique is unknown, although it's heavily implied to be the reason Mei Mei and him were able to escape Shibuya on such short notice when things got tight. Uiui was also apparently indispensable in transporting Maki Zenin between colonies and maintaining communication between the groups during the culling game, so it can be assumed it is some form of teleportation ability, although maybe it's not as simplistic as that. Shoko Iri is a Jujutsu High alumni who originally was in the same class year as Satoru Toru Gojo and Suguru Geto. As the school doctor, Shoko is responsible for the medical efforts for most of Jujutsu society. The reason for this is her mastery over the reverse curse technique ability, able to convert positive energy into an output, something that only two characters in the series, alongside Okotsu Yuta, are even able to actually do. This allows
allow Shoko to not only heal herself and her lung cancer, but regenerate her allies as well. Not even Satoru Gojo can accomplish this with reverse curse technique. And the worst part is, no matter how hard she tries, Shoko can never seem to put into words and actually teach another person how to perform this feat. Never being trained for combat, Shoko is mainly a support character, much like Wee Wee. It's implied she doesn't have a curse technique of her own, but her excellence in medical knowledge paired with her healing skills make her invaluable to Jujutsu High. Another Jujutsu High alumni, Utahime Iori is a semi-grade 1 sorcerer and a teacher over at the Kyoto Technical School of Jujutsu. Despite being a pro sorcerer as early as the hidden inventory arc, when characters like Suguru Geto or Satoru Gojo are still in high school, it seems like Utahime's main contribution to Jujutsu society revolves little around her combat ability. Spending most of her time in the background of the series and mostly acting as a guide for her students to find their true paths, Utahime is specifically listed as someone who has yet to experience the bliss of Black Flash, and thus has not been able to locate the core of her own cursed energy. This results in her lacking in cursed energy output, which is ironic due to her curse technique. Known as Solo Forbidden Area, when activated, any chosen sorcerer within Utahime's range will have their cursed energy temporarily amplified. This buff also applies to Utahime herself. When using a full incantation, ritual, song, and dance, Utahime is able to maximize this effect and take it even further, allowing a chosen target to achieve at least 120% of their power. Although a great character for support, and her long career in sorcery makes her an amazing teacher. When it comes to her ranking of power, Utahime does sit fairly low on the food chain. Takumo Ino is a grade 2 sorcerer who was enrolled into Jujutsu society from a young age due to his family lineage. Ino is an honorable sorcerer and makes it his life's mission to do everything the quote-unquote correct way, taking it so far as to refuse to take any recommendation to grade 1 that doesn't come from Ino's role model. Nanami Kento. Because of this, despite only being a grade 2 sorcerer, Takumo Ino's power level significantly exceeds any other sorcerer that shares his ranking. Ino is exceptionally strong in close combat and quite adept in manipulating his cursed energy, allowing him to exercise multiple curses during the Night of a Hundred Demons, as well as an entire room of transfigured humans without any help. He even outclassed two criminal curse users with little to no effort, at least until Do came out. Ino's curse technique is known as Auspicious Beast Summon and was noted to be very similar to Granny Ogami's seance technique in both utility and method. By covering his face with his black ski mask, Ino is able to tap into the spirit realm and temporarily become a medium with access to four familiars. Ino calls the Auspicious Beasts. The four of these beasts are confirmed as Kaichi, Raiki, Kirin, and Ryu. Three out of the four beasts have actually been summoned, although only two of their abilities have been revealed. Kaichi conjures a horn with a spiral pattern that can be launched at its target like a projectile, following relentlessly until it hits its mark. Raiki coats Ino's body in water that can either cushion him from damage or increase his overall mobility. Ryu was also summoned and shown to create electricity that surrounds Ino's hand, but he was sent to the Shadow Realm by Toji Zenin's ghost before it could be fully utilized. However, according to Ino, not a single soul that ever witnessed Ryu's summoning survive, up until that point at least. Yoshinobu Gakukanji is the principal of Kyoto Jujutsu High and a member of the higher-ups that decide how Jujutsu society progresses. As a member of the traditional conservative party, Gakukanji tries his best to ensure most, if not all, long-standing Jujutsu practices are held in place. Gakukanji is one of the main proponents of Itadori Yuji's execution and attempted to have him murdered during the goodwill, ironic, exchange event. Despite claiming his insistence on the matter isn't a personal grudge on Itadori and is more because he feels Sukuna's removal from society is a net good for everyone involved. As a grade 1 sorcerer, and quite an old one at that, Gakuganji is able to hold his own in combat quite formidably, strong enough to take down a fellow grade 1 principal, Matsumichi Yaga, although the latter did neglect to use his curse technique in the fight. Gakuganji's innate technique 
much like Utahime's, also revolves around music. Paired with a V-shaped electric guitar, Gakuganji is able to use his body like a sound amplifier, turning the melodies and riffs he plays on said guitar into waves of cursed energy that can deal effective damage to their opponent. It seems that cursed energy amplification can also be applied to others within Gakuganji's range. The full amount of power this technique is capable of has yet to be seen. Although, when assuming Yaga was able to break Gaku Kanji's guitar, despite holding back, the principle of Kyoto can't really be too much of a problem. Atsuya Kusakabe is a grade 1 sorcerer and the second year student teacher at Tokyo Jujutsu High. Despite his high rank, Kusakabe actually has no innate curse technique of his own, having to compensate for this with respectable cursed energy manipulation and swordsmanship skills, deriving most of his combat from the new shadow style. Kusakabe is the one who mentored Kasumi Miwa in the form as well. Meimei, a higher ranked professional sorcerer, notes Kusakabe as the only person to ever reach such a high grade without a curse technique. Even though most of his peers will compliment him, Kusakabe thinks very low of himself, openly admitting to his supposed inability to defeat any threat at the level of special grade. He spends most of the Shibuya incident tricking Panda into perusing the most safe and harmless areas of the city in order to attract the least attention. Again, despite this self-deprecation, when showing up to save his students from Kenjaku at the end of the Shibuya arc, Kenjaku openly notes him as the first to appear with any actual skill. And to be able to block a maximum Uzumaki like that, I can't say I disagree with Kenjaku. As stated before, Kusakabe is a master in the new shadow style, which requires the user to have a fine accurate control on cursed energy applications such as Simple Domain, and coat these essences onto things such as a katana's blade. The new shadow style, combined with Kusakabe's swordsmanship, gives birth to abilities such as Bato's sword drawing, a quick draw unsheathing slash that rotates cursed energy finely to dramatically increase its speed and power. Kusakabe also also has other forms as well, like Evening Moon Sword Drawing, that, although having an unknown effect, proves Kusakabe isn't as weak or unqualified as he claims. As someone who clearly had to compensate for their lack of curse technique their whole life, Kusakabe has high physical stats and an extensive grasp on barrier techniques and curse energy control. With swift swordsmanship, tough durability, and a high intellect on all things sorcery, the only place Kusakabe falls short in is confidence, which, in Jujutsu, can legitimately make all the difference. I won't be going too much into all the Zenin clan members because frankly, not much is known about them besides their curse techniques and just about how much wall they're able to paint with their blood. So, to be generous to Ogi, Ranta, and Janichi Zenin, ranked as Supreme Grade 1 Sorcerers, they probably sit somewhere around here in power level, so they're not really going to be taking a rank, but again, if they were, uh, uh, about here. Meimei is a Grade 1 Sorcerer who acts completely independent from any organization in Jujutsu society. For a monetary fee, Meimei will ally herself with the highest bidder, who, for better or worse, seems to almost always be Jujutsu High. She is the older sister of Oiwi, and has been a sorcerer long enough to see Suguru Geto and Satoru Gojo grow up through their teenage years. Born with what most would consider a weak and ineffective innate technique, Meimei is the user of the bird manipulation curse technique, which allows her to imbue crows with her cursed energy and take control of them, to the extent she can even share vision with the birds and use them for surveillance. It's in spite of these low expectations for for her that Meimei was able to rise above and become the dangerous threat she is today. Similar to Kusakabe and choosing to make a career out of compensating for her weak points, Meimei heavily trained her body to its physical peak, to the point she's able to wield a large battle axe with little to no effort and cause enough damage with it to shatter full boulders. Her speed, strength, and intellect make her a significant threat, able to easily delete semi-grade 1 cursed users while gloating the entire time. Her analytical skills lead her to defeat even domain-wielding special grades, but most importantly, those analytical skills led to her going back and maximizing her thought-to-be weak curse technique, resulting in the creation of its ultimate ability, Bird Strike. By creating a binding vow with a single crow, Meimei can command the bird to give its life to her cause. In exchange for the crow committing a kamikaze attack, its cursed energy surges beyond belief, 
due to the massive payment of the creature's life. By hurling itself at Mei Mei's enemy, the exponentially charged up crow causes a devastating blow to the target. A force destructive enough to exercise a special grade curse spirit in one single strike. Although unknown how many times Mei Mei has actually had to resort to using this, she claims the only person to ever survive was Satoru Gojo himself. Approaching every situation calm and collected, with no real allegiance, if Mei Mei actually gets into any danger, she's the first person with an exit strategy. She's so rarely ever in danger, that when taking longer than normal on a mission, Jujutsu Hai sent Gojo and Geto after her because they knew something was wrong. Combine her talent with her younger brother's love and dedication, and Mei Mei poses a serious threat. It's no wonder Jujutsu High pays so much to keep her on their side. The staple of what a true grade 1 sorcerer should be, in both theory and practice, Kento Nanami is a professional sorcerer unlike no other. Growing up through the school system of Jujutsu High, Nanami was no stranger to the hardships and tragedy faced by sorcerers on the regular. After losing one of his closest classmates, Yu Heibara, and graduating from the high school, Nanami chose to leave sorcery behind and become a big salary man with dreams of growing a lot of wealth and retiring in a country with low cost of living. After some deep reflection, Nanami claims he actually ran away from the sorcerer lifestyle, as opposed to merely quitting it. Although coming off as stoic and overly serious, Nanami is actually a very kind-hearted and warm individual. Immediately taking up a mentor role in Itadori Yuji's life and taking an interest in the soon-to-be executed teenager's future. This also was proven when he worked in finance unable to properly grow in the field because of his inability to con or trick his clients. His great sense of empathy and leadership qualities aside, when it comes to sorcery, Nanami is one of the most reputable members of the profession. With a solid handle on cursed energy manipulation, and the ability to weave it carefully into his physical combat, in close quarters fighting, Nanami excels above most others. This mostly stems from his access to the ability Black Flash, that is a random occurrence granted to sorcerers when cursed energy is applied precisely within 0.000001 seconds of an attack. And as stated earlier, by achieving Black Flash, one can access their core of cursed energy, truly beginning to understand sorcery. Nanami maintains the highest record of Black Flash uses in a single day, at least until Itadori Yuji breaks it. On top of all of this, Nanami's intellect and analytical skills are also above average, allowing him to fight on equal footing with special grade curses like Mahito or Dagon, despite not knowing much about their fighting style or innate technique going into the battle. Nanami's durability is also revolutionary, noted by Haruta Shigemo as being comparable to a stone fucking wall, not moving an inch despite Haruta kicking Nanami with some force. Also, being able to reinforce his soul subconsciously with cursed energy when hit by Mahito's idol transfiguration, something that is supposed to be a one-hit KO if not properly defended against. Nanami miraculously survived Dagon's Death Swarm ability, which is a relentless, never-ending horde of man-eating Shikigami, as well as endured a large flame attack from Jogo, still living with enough strength afterwards to charge through crowds of transfigured humans alone, fighting them all off. Nanami's curse technique is known as the Ratio Technique, or the 7-3 ability. By dividing his target with 10 lines and forcibly creating a weak spot at the ratio point of 7 to 3, Nanami can strike this weak point and critically injure whatever the target is. The manifested graph does not have to match a target's length or wingspan, and Nanami can freely divide a target into specific parts, allowing him to precisely hit certain limbs, appendages, or structures. Which means, although Nanami uses a blunt and heavily bandaged sword, the sorcerer is able to take off full limbs from his target with swift accuracy. And this is taken to its fullest extent when Nanami reaches his overtime state. By using a binding vow, a promise limit on his own power, Nanami nerfs himself during his 10am to 6pm work shift to 80 or 90% of his power on any given day. If forced to work past his normal shift, Nanami is allowed to use not just his maximum strength, but break his normal limits and access close to a 20% boost in power. With all of these extensive feats and his notable reputation as a sorcerer, claiming at this point the only thing he hasn't achieved is domain expansion, it's not surprising to see how Nanami has gained so much respect in this field.
the principal of Tokyo Jujutsu High and teacher to special grades Suguru Geto and Satoru Gojo as the practitioner and creator of puppet sorcery. Yaga Masamichi was the absolute best sorcerer at making cursed corpses. These quote-unquote dolls were capable of multiple functions, such as combat or even training. Masamichi Yaga's masterpiece is actually Panda, a cursed corpse that is actually self-sufficient and able to produce its own cursed energy, independent from Yaga. Because Machimichi discovered the code to creating life, the higher-ups immediately assumed the worst possibility with this kind of power, imagining that if taken to its fullest extent, Masamichi would be able to create an entire army of cursed corpses of various shapes, sizes, and utility all completely independent and everlasting, even if the creator was to perish himself. Yaga was immediately locked away and planned to be registered as a special grade sorcerer. Although the principal was able to convince the other higher ups that Panda was merely an anomaly and not something he would ever be able to replicate willingly. Residing in secret as an unregistered special grade, all of Yaga's creations, besides Panda of course, had to be hidden away in a secret forest that was protected by Lord Tengen. Because he was unable to ever reach his true potential, in fear of being sentenced to execution, all of Yaga's feats and reputation stem from his personal combat experience and control of average cursed dolls. With a strong physical build and enough cursed energy control to teach students how to perform similar actions, Masamichi can be assumed to be a relatively powerful fighter. And if you consider he can have a backup of cursed dolls, that attack power becomes all the more overwhelming. Even when nerfing himself, he was able to effectively injure Kyoto Principal Gaku Kanji, as well as destroy the latter's cursed tool guitar. And if you consider he's actually a secret special grade lying in wait, who genuinely could have created an endless spawning army of pandas to take on the world, the Yaga we are presented with throughout the series is a Yaga who was always holding back. Which is my only reasoning for why he ranks so high on this list here with literally no combat feats. Get mad at me if you want. I stand by my decision. The youngest son of Naobito Zenin, the most recent head of the Zenin clan before the Shibuya incident took place. Because Naoya showed the most promise as one of Naobito's children, he was effectively spoiled the most, resulting in an inflated ego and superiority complex that extended to even his own clan's elders. It is for this reason, including the fact that he inherited his father's curse technique, that Naoya felt he deserved the role of Zenin clan head. As a supreme grade 1 sorcerer, Naoya is known as the pinnacle of the Zenin clan's power. As the leader of the clan's elite sorcerer squad, the Hei, Naoya is the strongest sorcerer in the clan's ranks, right behind his own father. From a young age, after an encounter with Toji Zenin, Naoya prioritized chasing what he considered to be true strength, something that most ordinary people would never be able to understand. But Naoya was one of those who could grasp real power, just like Toji Zenin and Satoru Gojo before him. Naoya Zenin truly deluded himself to believe he was blessed. On top of excellent cursed energy reserves, thanks to being a descendant of the three great families, his manipulation and output immediately outclasses most grade ones on this list. Naoya's intellect was also considered genius from a young age, and when having to fight with a curse technique like projection sorcery, high brain power is almost a requirement. Projection sorcery is a Zenin clan specific technique that revolves around the animation aspect of frames per second. By separating one single moment into 24 phases, or frames, both Naoya and his opponent must proceed to follow the map he has laid out inside this time frame. If either Naoya or the opponent don't replicate the 24 points perfectly, the failure will get frozen in time for a solid second, resulting in them looking as if they've been stuck in a freeze frame. Quite the complicated curse technique, its complexity actually adds to its strength, because for as long as the opponent continues to move outside of the constraints Naoya sets for them, they'll just keep freezing over and over, leaving them vulnerable for him to land critical strikes. On top of this, Naoya can set his own 24 frame path to end at a location far away from his original one, which means by following that 24 point path he lays out for himself, he can cover large distances in the time span of only one second. And by continually doing this, Naoya can maintain acceleration between bursts, meaning if he continues to teleport himself, Naoya will grow faster and faster.
faster until his speed reaches insane and incomprehensible levels. Not only will his speed be multiplied, but the velocity will drastically increase his attack power, making Naoya a terrifying opponent, whether you understand his curse technique or not. If you go into a fight blind, Naoya will run circles around you and keep freezing you in place. And although people like Maki have been shown able to deduce the 24 point plot and catch Naoya with a counter attack lying in wait, before Maki is even able to get to this point, Naoya's intense speed and destructive power is whipping her all around the battlefield. And for someone who doesn't have that same kind of durability, one long mountain toss and a heal drop could be the end. None of this even includes Naoya Naoya's evolved vengeful spirit version of the technique that also includes a domain expansion. But we'll save that one for the cursed spirit ranking. For now, just in his regular sorcerer form, Naoya stands as a critical threat to most sorcerers in Japan. He is still superseded in both power and experience by his father, Naobito, the 26th head of the Zenin clan, and another sorcerer who holds the rank of Supreme Grade 1. Like father, like son, Naobito is just as, if not more arrogant and chauvinistic than his own child. He is a known and very open alcoholic, to the point his validity as a clan head is questioned often. However, befitting of the leader of one of the three great families, his strength tends to speak for itself and make up for his low quality personality. Sharing the projection sorcery curse technique with his son, Naobito is able to make a reputation for himself as the fastest Jujutsu sorcerer behind Satoru Gojo. Because of this, his projection sorcery is not only 10 times more disorienting, his ability to work it into his close quarters combat and overwhelming opponent is significantly higher. Although the clan had never achieved domain expansion, Naobito is familiar with anti-domain abilities such as Falling Blossom Emotion, which allow him to physically counter any incoming innate attacks. The combination of anti-domain tactics as well as superior projection sorcery allows Naobito to surpass his son and take on special grade level threats like Dagon while outshining fellow grade 1 Nanami Kento and and saving unawakened Maki Zenin from getting lethally damaged in the blink of an eye. When it comes to experience, mastery over his curse technique, and misogyny, the source is clearly purer than the offshoot. At least it was until the man lost his arm, and therefore his entire core of balance in his curse technique, losing just enough time off his agility to have Jogo be a split second faster, burning him to a crisp. One of the four special grade sorcerers that exist within the current Jujutsu era. Despite not affiliating herself with Jujutsu High because of a conflict of interest, Yuki Sakumo does her best to familiarize herself with their actions and does make sure to collect her paycheck to fund her travels across the world. Yuki disagrees with the higher-ups method of creating a cursed spirit-free world and therefore chooses to set off on her own journey of research. At some point in her travels, Yuki meets a young third grader named Aoi Toto that shows potential as a sorcerer and through harsh training that scars his face for life she turns Toto into one of the best grade 1 sorcerers out there. One of the biggest things Yuki imparted onto Toto is his outspoken, shameless, and unapologetic acceptance of the self. One of the most necessary things for a sorcerer is self-indulgence, which rewards those with extroverted and selfish tendencies. The question, what kind of girls are you into, actually originates from Yuki Sakumo herself. Yuki believes the correct way to save society from cursed spirits is to break humanity away from cursed energy entirely. Basing this hypothesis off of the superhuman qualities granted to those who achieve an absolute zero amount of it, such as Toji Fushiguro or Maki Zenin, it's for this reason that she opposes Kenjaku and his plan to maximize curse energy in the world, having her once again partner up with Jujutsu Hai and the immortal Tengen. Yuki Sakumo is actually pretty closely related to Tengen, being a former star plasma vessel. Although it's unclear if this means she's actually centuries old and Tengen then moved on from her as a vessel or she outright denied her fate. The one thing that's unmistakable about Yuki is that she not only has the experience to back her special grade status up, she has extensive knowledge that not even the Jujutsu higher-ups are aware of. Speaking of which, originally, the higher-ups weren't even aware of Yuki Sakumo's curse technique. However, they knew just based off of her origins and cursed energy output levels, 
special grade was a rightful designation as regardless of her innate technique the massive amount of cursed energy as well as her physical strength and combat abilities are groundbreaking paired with her allied shikigami slash curse tool garuda yuki is capable of causing mass destruction and leveling entire areas with just melee combat garuda can also act independently restraining opponents or distracting them with its own attacks her endurance is also remarkable able to continue an offensive onslaught on an enemy despite her body being completely mangled and contorted beyond reasonable measure yuki sakumo's talent with reverse curse technique also shines strong as well as she can regenerate completely from this state without exhausting much of her cursed energy and reverse curse technique is barely the starting point for yuki sakumo's mastery over sorcery which extends even further to strong barrier techniques like simple domain or even having a domain expansion of her own although unfortunately never being revealed yuki can switch between offense and defense skills like this without much cooldown or effort required as a special grade she outranks any sorcery were on this list just by her base stats and extensive skill in jujutsu but her curse technique is what completely elevates yuki to godlike status known as star rage yuki sakumo's curse technique is the manipulation of the concept of mass by adding virtual mass onto herself or her shikigami garuda she can apply devastating amounts of force and power into her strikes capable of vaporizing a special grade curse spirit and ripping the limbs off of it and anomaly like Kenjaku, despite the latter's clear attempt at blocking the attack. Yuki herself claims she has to be very careful with the amount of mass she adds, as if she were to go overboard, she could effectively doom all of reality, as shown when she creates a black hole on herself by literally breaking the laws of physics with the overwhelming amount of mass she added onto herself. This black hole would have destroyed the entire world, had it not been kept contained by Yuki's own final will, as well as Lord Lord Tengen's barrier. And absolutely no surprises here. The only person who would be able to rank higher than an actual fucking black hole. The obvious choice is number one, the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer in the modern era, Satoru Gojo, the honored one. Even during his first day of life, Gojo influenced the state of the world. Even as a young child, Gojo was able to strike fear in the hearts of curse users and assassins everywhere. The first member of the Gojo clan to be born with both the Six Eyes and the Limitless Curse technique in hundreds of years. The combination of these two techniques could make a person nigh invincible given the right vessel. With all of these blessings, Satoru Gojo grew up quite full of himself. Into his teenage years as a Jujutsu High student, Gojo was even able to best reputable curse user organizations like the Q or absolute monsters like sorcerer killer Toji Fushigoro. And after unlocking access to reverse curse technique after tasting a premature death, the child truly comes into his own as the pinnacle of Jujutsu. Thanks to the six eyes, Satoru Gojo was able to manipulate his cursed energy to the finest degree, using the least amount possible to achieve the tasks he sets out for himself. The Six Eyes also allows him to immediately deduce an opponent's innate technique and power level, like a permanent scouter. Gojo is also able to view events from long distances and sense cursed energy even further than most other sorcerers because of this. When combining the advantages the Six Eyes give him and reverse curse technique, Gojo is able to actually create an infinite cycle of regeneration on his brain. Normally, use of the six eyes as well as the limitless curse technique would begin to weigh on and cause stress to Gojo's brain. But by using reverse curse technique, this quote unquote brain fry can be healed. And with his minimal cursed energy utility, this actually creates a phenomena where Gojo never runs out of power because his cursed energy actually replenishes faster than it depletes. This gives the impression of Gojo having a colossal amount of cursed energy when in reality, this isn't exactly correct. Okotsu Yuta clarifies it's more so that he has infinite energy, 
When pairing the Blessing of the Six Eyes with the Limitless Curse technique, which is essentially a manipulation of time and space, the user is allowed to create three separate applications of the Limitless ability. Infinity, the Neutral, which creates a space around Gojo that slows down any and all incoming threats indefinitely, to the point they will never actually reach him unless he wills it so, essentially making an impenetrable defense around Gojo that makes it nigh impossible to actually make contact with the sorcerer. But even while supplying the ultimate shield, the Limitless also gives its user a number of viable options of attack. Blue, the reinforced version of Limitless, creates a pull effect around the user's hands, or blue orbs that Gojo can spawn wherever he so chooses. Whatever is deemed the magnetic center begins to pull all matter towards itself. The intensity of this vacuum is determined by Gojo, potentially being strong enough to literally pull everything in the vicinity or just the opponent themselves. And red, the reversed application that creates a push effect, is a burst of force that repels the target with a destructive blast of energy. This explosion can go off immediately on impact or become delayed to catch an opponent off guard. Combining these specific applications of Limitless creates the technique's hidden hollow technique. Hollow Purple, an imaginary mass conjured by the fusion of both red and blue, shoots forward and deletes everything in its path until dissipation. An unbelievable luck of the draw when it comes to power, especially when both of those amazing techniques are intertwined. Like I said, way back in the beginning of this Gojo jerk-off, even with both of these blessings, it takes a good user to make the most of them. And Gojo isn't just the strongest sorcerer because of these lucky genes. He just might have the best understanding of sorcery in the era, shown as a full-on master of simple domains capable of casting it twice and once after the other. Better at self-healing than Shoko, the queen of reverse curse technique herself, to the point he can even purposely destroy the part of his brain that holds the curse technique and then regenerate it to supplement his curse technique cooldown after domain casting. Cursed energy manipulation unlike any talked about before, add on top of all of this Gojo's domain expansion, unlimited void, a massive overwhelming injection of so much knowledge the victim is stunlocked and frozen by the sensory overload, something that can, because of Gojo's six eyes hack, be used as often as five to six times a day, potentially more. It is not hard to see why Gojo is the strongest, like literally at all. And that's all she wrote. Every single professional sorcerer ranked from weakest to strongest. If you enjoyed this video, hit me with a like, subscribe for more content, and comment down below who your favorite sorcerer is. Thank you so much to Johnny Star for editing this video. Click an end screen video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. And thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video.